All right, hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to talk about this, which is the mounting plate that I mentioned in the last video. Um, as you can see, this is a very simple piece uh, design-wise, um, but it has a few features that I want to talk about uh, first. Well, why do we need this fixture plate? Technically, we don't. I could also make this, uh, all the parts I want to make, the XY plate and the Z plate, um, in the vise or clamp someone else to the table. However, um, as I said in the last video, I'm hoping to kickstart the Millet Forward program and for that having a repeatable, a repeatable fixture, I'm sorry, uh, in order to basically just, just slap on uh, the fixture plate, uh, find that uh, origin in the corner here and then be good to go. Um, that makes uh, both work holding and um, repeatability uh, of this task much easier. So what does this fixture plate um, do? Or what are this, its features, if you will? Uh, well, the first thing is uh, it's a locating guide. Uh, as you can see, we have quite a few of those uh, six millimeter holes and those four around the corner here um, are there in order for me to have a repeatable uh, zero for my uh, stock. So um, I'm planning to do uh, both the X, Y and the Z plate on this uh, fixture plate. And uh, both of them have an op zero which uh, faces the backside and establishes uh, locating pin holes and through holes in order to bolt stuff down to the fixture plate. Um, and I'll, I'll just put in the uh, Z-plate, for example. So uh, this plate, uh, as you can see, is located by those uh, four alignment holes um, I mentioned earlier. And it's going to get uh, taped down with double-sided tape onto the fixture plate. And um, then I'll switch over to the manufacturing side. Uh, in this first setup, as you can see, we're only going to do a facing cut, a boring operation, a uh, cleanup operation after the boring, and some chamfers. And that's basically it for the backside. And um, yeah, so this is basically what, what gets done uh, on this part. And this establishes these uh, six millimeter dowel pinholes which I'll use to um, hold and and um, locate the part then for op one. I, I'll call it op one um, since I'm, I'm only facing and, and making locating features. Um, I'm calling that op zero and that gets done down here in the corner as is indicated here. And after that, uh, oh, the, uh, the same thing also gets done to the uh, XY plate, by the way. We do a face and we do a bore and you can see we have the locating features and we have some through holes uh, in order to um, bolt the plate down. Um, and after that, all the miscellaneous uh, small holes you can see around here are 4.2 uh, millimeter holes that are meant for M5 tapping. Um, so as I can, as I said, uh, I can bolt stuff down. I'm gonna put on, this is uh, op one of the XY joiner plate. So for example, you can see we have the two locating pins uh, that we made earlier. And we have those uh, through holes here, um, which are tapped M5 in the, in the locating uh, or in the fixture plate. So we have a secure way to uh, hold this uh, plate, we have located it with the dowel pins, nothing can move around, and we have hopefully a repeatable uh, fixture. Same thing also gets done with the Z-plate. The Z-plate only has the, um, the, uh, uh, the Z-plate gets the backside uh, completely done in op zero, so there's only uh, op one for the front side. And as you can see here, it's, it's just, we have some, um, holes around here to make uh, the boring of these uh, central um, holes or recesses for the socket head uh, cap screws possible. And uh, after that, 
we can uh, bolt it down here in order to, to get access to the complete front side. Um, so this uh, so the, the fixture plate is uh, basically, well, it's a locating, it has locating features and it has mounting features and that's it. And it hopefully has a nice and flat surface on uh, top in order to get a uh, good parallelism and a good mounting surface, especially for op zero, which is only done with double-sided tape. All right, then let's get into the manufacturing side of things. Um, for my op one, I only did two operations, uh, two bores, one for the through holes and one for the recesses for the uh, screw heads. I'm using those lens type uh, screws, so those recesses have to be quite large. Uh, we're talking almost 10 millimeters here. And um, both of them were done uh, a, with the same tool. And that's a uh, five millimeter uh, flat end mill. Let me just give you a look here. Uh, five millimeter single flute, uh, 22 millimeters uh, flute length at uh, 24,000 RPM and uh, 500 millimeters per minute uh, cutting feed rate, so a feed per tooth of uh, two one hundredth of a millimeter. And that's the uh, basic setup for for my uh, for this five millimeter. Um, everything as you would expect it, uh, bottom height for a whole bottom and uh, ramping down at a two degree angle. So uh, all of this was done on the uh, MDF plate I showed you earlier. And uh, yeah, well, let's cut to the footage of that.
Alright, so here comes the fun part of two, basically. I've now mounted the plate directly via the uh, boards we just made to the table. And you can see I've painted myself into a bit of a corner here. Well, uh, as you can see, the stock is uh, a bit uh, thicker uh, in Y dimension as well. I ordered it uh, five millimeters more to be uh, precise. And that poses kind of a problem because, um, well, we can't actually get that much uh, material of the front side of Y. So, um, well, all the material I have in the way at the moment has to go to the uh, back side of Y. The problem with that is that if the material is back here um, and the t material or the, the fixture plate is as wide as the table, well, now the stock material is in the way of uh, actually, well, being able to uh, set my zero correctly. The material that is back here uh, interferes with the uh, Z column and that poses kind of a, a problem to, to get uh, a proper um, to get a, a, a proper zero on the front edge. Well, What's the solution to that? Uh, you can do it my way or you can do it the correct way. The correct way is to uh, put your uh, center, uh, the your zero point on the back side, back left side of the stock. You can easily reach that. Uh, it's easily within machine limits um, to uh, do this. Um, but I didn't think of that until now or later. And so, well, I did it like this and I had a, uh, I measured my stock offset this time. And uh, I've had a stock offset of 1.5 millimeters in the front here and 3.5 in the back here. And so the first order, uh, mode of operation is to uh, actually get that removed um, back there. I'm doing a 2D contour in uh, three step downs um, with uh, two passes here. And then uh, as those, those are two roughing passes and then a, a two full uh, step down um, finishing passes. Um, that didn't get me all the way there though. Uh, so, well, I had to do some dirty tricks. Uh, at first I was able to move, uh, X back by another millimeter. Uh, I didn't quite reach it in the, in the first setup. So I was able to, uh, uh, pull X back by another millimeter after the first pass. Uh, then did the same thing again, uh, with, um, the same tool. This is also still the five millimeter uh, tool we had in before. So that gained me another millimeter and then I needed another half millimeter. So how do you get a half millimeter easily without being able to um, move your table uh, backwards further in order to reach your, your uh, zero point in the front? Well, um, I'm sure there's better ways to do this, but um, well, I did the dirty thing and switched to a six millimeter end mill and basically did the same uh, 2d contour operation i did here with a six millimeter end mill which uh gave me the necessary 0.5 millimeters uh in order to well get flush with the uh y axis or the x axis table to be uh to be correct and well that wasn't pretty but it worked so let's see that
So at this point, uh, things started to go wrong. So I tried doing the uh, front side and basically once again doing a uh, contour with my 5mm end mill as before. But the problem was this was outside of machine limits. Well, um, as I was able to get to the back side, and now uh, out here I only had one uh, one point five millimeters of stock instead of three point five millimeters of stock. I once again did well a questionable thing and just flipped the the stock by one hundred eighty degrees. Um, since at this point there's nothing yet um, well important done and we're we're still only um, trimming down the rough stock sizes. I figured I'd just flip it and um, do the back side as I did with the front side. But, well, that didn't go as planned either. You'll see why in a second. Um, so, yeah, well, um, just fix this, I switched to the 6mm end mill that I had to use anyway, and uh, finished the cut like that, that didn't take any video of that though. So here are some pictures of the surface finish after that. So the next thing was a lot of uh, more holes, uh, all the holes for the uh, M5 threads, and the 6mm alignment pins. I didn't take much video of that, so uh, let's see what we have. So the last operation, a facing cut. This is a new to me tool. Um, I've got the Fraser 35 millimeter uh, indexable insert um, face mill, and um, running it quite slow here at 18,000 RPM, as slow as my spindle allows. Um, but at a cutting feed rate of 810 millimeters per minute, um, which, well, <laughs> if you stand in front of the machine, is quite scary. And I'm uh, attempting to take the, uh, take a uh, half a millimeter step down and a 0.2 millimeter uh, finishing step down. So, well, let's see what happens. So my VFD cut out, and instead of doing the smart thing and reducing the depth of cut and trying again, I just simply restarted the VFD and tried to do the cut again.
So, um, yeah. Well, I did uh, let the spindle and VFD cool down. They were quite uh, hot to the touch and uh, let it sit there overnight. And I did the uh, cut again on the next morning, but just the 0.2 millimeter finishing cut, and that worked out fine. So, um, yeah, don't do stuff like that. <laughs> and I'm going to have to um, play around with that recipe a bit more. But, uh, well, the surface finish is still nice. So, personally, this is a massive lessons learned, and um, I'm going to do things a bit differently in the future. And I hope to catch you um, on a video then. And next is going to be the Z plate, which I already teased a bit. And I hope I can, uh, I will see you there in that video. And uh, that's going to be it for today. Thank you for watching, and till next time. Goodbye.